Okay, three, two, one, boom. Uh, lead royalty, boxing royalty, uh, Mr. Josh Warren. A massive thank you for joining us, mate. I know you're very busy and I know you're deep in camp, so I really appreciate you coming on, pal. How are you? I'm very well, mate. Very well. Uh, thanks for having me on. It's good to see what you're doing and uh, liking it, liking your journey as well, liking your story. So, you know, in world of combat sports, I think we're flying the flag very high. Um, I- yeah, be busy. We just announced our, our next fight. Um, we're deep into training. I've, I've fucking more or less trained over, over COVID and whatnot. Um, so yeah, here we are. We're going to come at that in a second. Yeah. Um, but as always, we've got to do a little uh, a sponsor shout out to our sponsors, Manscaped. The number one in the grooming, male grooming, um, mainly below the belt. I'm not going to pass this round and let you have a little play of it, Josh, because I'm not going <laughs> to lie. I've used it. <laughs> um, but it, you're, you're smooth anyway. You're smooth. You're well-groomed. You don't need all like this. I do know a few guys who do need this. Um, so this is the Lawn Mower 3.0 full body shaver, mainly used for the below the belt grooming. Absolutely class piece of kit. Um, this is called the, the Weed Whacker. Um, how old are you, Josh? You're 30 now. I'm 30, mate, yeah. Well, in about three or four years, when you get towards 35, this is when all ear air is going to start right, coming. Okay. Mate, because mine... Uh, listen, they've started already. Mate, I've started I'm bad, already. mate, at the minute. It's my nose, there, my ears, there. So this is called the Weed Whacker, this one. Um, this is for nose trimming, ear trimming, because every day when I look in the mirror, I'm just getting more grey hairs, more hairs in my ear, more out of my nose, and it's getting out of control now. Um, but this uh, helps sort me out. There's all sorts you can get with these. You've got um, like the travel grooming kit as well these are the shears 2.0 um for your nails um there's no size clippers again uh toenail clippers everything in there you can use the code kicking it and that will get you uh 20 off everything it's even got deodorant for your balls mate there you go. <laughs> yeah there you go. <laughs> there's uh someone said that i think it was me my friend who runs a podcast for me school he said well you put it under your armpit don't you so why not put it on your balls so yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's right isn't it? um i'm not gonna lie i've used this and it does feel quite nice as well so Use the code kicking it um, for all 20% of all the Manscaped products. You get the oh, whole body hair trimmer. This is the lawnmower, the shears, and uh, the weed whacker. Kicking it. And uh, yeah, 20% off. Yeah, right. I might have, have to look at them. You mate, know, I, honestly. I'm telling you. I'd, t- I'm, I'm, I'd like to think of myself as a modern day mate. I'll take care of myself, you know. <laughs> I don't grow hair on my chest, but I you know, grow it around my knackers and yeah. whatnot. And uh, on the shaver that I have done, I've nicked myself a fair few well, times. Well, that's what this, that, this does not nick you at right, all. That's, right. uh, it's like modern technology. See, it's the worst pain ever. <laughs> it's horrendous, mate. And you bleed like someone just stabbed you. <laughs> telling you. So, you need to cut me up balls. Oh, at Christmas, I, I, I would like to say, no, I'd get the, because everyone would say, no, is it, is it good that? Is it good? I'm going to get it for my... Uh, for like what girls were asking me, I'm gonna get it for for uh, my husband, and that I said it's fucking brilliant. I yeah, said yeah. you you'll be happy definitely. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Them spiky nuts in your mouth anymore. <laughs> um, right, let's get down to it. Um, big fight coming up. Obviously, we've had a bit of con- controversy though. Is it yeah, what's yeah. his name? He's fighting now, the Mexican Lara. Is it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, you were Lara. meant to be involved in a massive fight, a unification yeah. for the WBA and the Ring Magazine, wasn't it? Against uh, Kanzu from China. That's correct. Tell us what's happened, mate, because that was going to be huge. Yeah, that was going to be massive. And uh, <laughs> cut a long story short, prior to the pandemic last year, start 2020, I'd re-signed with Matchroom, re-signed with Eddie Earn after having uh, three years with Frank Warren. Um, said to Eddie Earn that I want, it, I want to be walking into a unification fight. Yep, no problem, we'll make that happen. We were scheduled to fight at Edinley Stadium, 25,000. Now... I've done Ellen Road, I've done Leeds Arena 10 times or whatever. I want to go to the States and fight in the States, you know, I want to. We all want you to go, so we can all come with you, mate. This is we it, can I, all come. Like, the, amount of, the, amount of, the amount of people have told me that like, they've got a credit card waiting. You know, <laughs> it's it. about making the memories, like for myself, I've achieved, I've superseded all my goals, you know, I've, I've three title defences, um, I've won every belt there is to win in, in, in There's in, not left for you to do other exactly. than that, is there? Yeah, and, and it's all about making memories now, making a bit of history, make, adding to your legacy, yeah. you know, if I can unify the division or become a two-weight world champion, then they're all bonuses. But I want to give like back to the, the fans, you know, it's like some of my school pals are saying, listen, it's mad when you think about it. When when can you ever say that you went to school with someone who's gone and, gone and fought in Vegas? Yeah. You know, so... Well, Jamie Savory went to school with you. He says it all the time. He says, he's fucking mad how he just went to Corpus. With Corpus you went to, wasn't he? No, no, John Smeaton. Oh, Smeaton, sorry. It's mad yeah, yeah. how he just went to Smeaton and that. And he's going to be fighting in America. I think it's yeah. fucking great yeah. for yeah. us, though. <laughs> That's what I mean. It's like, <laughs> it's like you're, giving, you're giving people their memories, aren't you? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, that we'll schedule to do that. So, Edinburgh with the next one, obviously. The pandemic came in. <laughs> fuck all they can do about that right so boxing gets cancelled for, for a long time until it starts coming back in his back garden now I'm supposed to fight Kanju 
who's coming over from China. You've also got governing bodies and officials from the states, people coming over from all uh, around the world. It makes it difficult to do. We've also that, you know, purses, purses need to be negotiated because we're, we're scheduled to get X amount, but without the crowd there and the gate receipt, you lose all that stuff. So, you know, this has taken a long, long time to negotiate and it's probably the downside to, to boxing, um, how long it takes to, to get a fight to happen. I used to th think that when you get to this level, it becomes easier, but to those who really don't understand it's like fucking buying a an house and buying it again and buying it when you when you're waiting for contracts to come back between solicitors it's like that mate it's yeah. just it's hard work so i was scheduled to go out december um on the aj card then that got cancelled then it was going to be january then the date changed about eight or nine times everything was finalized around december 20th I had the artwork on my phone, posted about to go out. Um, all interviews lined up with Sky Sports, like, you know, all the different media outlets. Then all of a sudden, like, it's not gone out. And I'm thinking, something's not right here. Then another week's gone by. Then, then until last week, last Tuesday, I heard that it's pulled out. I'm like, what do you mean it's pulled out? He don't want it. He don't, he don't, he don't want to fight. What are the like, excuses? So the excuses, what I've been hearing, are he wants to fight in front of a crowd. Right? We just had this discussion downstairs. <laughs> Every fighter at the minute should not give a fuck. We, it's been that long since you can get a fight. They should just be jumping Mate, at it. I, I honestly, like, I've had made in my hands like, for the last few days. Obviously, I've got to get my head to fucking switch back on because I've still got a fighter in front of me yeah. in, in terms of uh, Michelle Lara on February 13th. But I don't understand his why. You know, he still wants to fight in front of the crowds. Now, there may have been a bonus to his pay packet if there were a crowd there. But the geezer was already earning four or five times his career best payday. That's ridiculous. The Ring Magazine be belt were online. My Massive. IBF belt yeah. were online. I mean, the Ring Magazine belt, you only get to fight with it when number one fights number two or number one fights number three. Yeah. So there's only like three who's fighters. Who's got it in, the, in England? I mean, it's just so Josh Fury. It's, it's, it's not, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, just in, like, yeah, yeah. Massive, it's a no, massive. I think, Josh, I think Josh Taylor has it in oh, Scotland. Yeah. But, yeah, um, it's a yeah, massive, massive it's, deal. Mate, it's, it, you, you were no joke there, are you? Yeah. I mean, now I'm ranked number one by the Ring Magazine rankings. I don't fucking put myself there. You know, I just do what I do. And they deem me the very best in division. So they've had me there for fucking about a year now. Box Rec have got me there as well. You know, you, you would have thought that the fighter wants to take that top spot. There's a pandemic going on. There's not going to be crowds there. You have to make... Do like, what we've you got. Make, exactly. Yeah. We're lucky that sport can continue. Yep. We're lucky that we're allowed to entertain and, and, and carry on. It's a short, short business as it is. You've got so shelf life, mate. Fucking strike exactly. while iron's up. You know, I'm I'm taking more than a 50% cut. I'm still like 60, 70% cut anyway as it is mm. to, to getting in there. Fucking hell, that, that's hard enough pill to swallow, but I'm like, listen... Got to make do. You like I say, you've got to be active. It's been like 12, 12 or 13 months since I've been in the ring. So you want to be getting out there. I thought that he had the same mentality. And all of a sudden, he's making these bullshit excuses. That fuming, mate. Fuming because, very... like, you, you, you know, we've already been in camp, like I say, since September or October, just constantly training. Now, some people in my team get paid after the fight, but a lot of people in my team, I pay, you know. Beforehand, as, yeah, yeah. Beforehand, yeah. as we go along. So, strength and conditioning coaches, sparring partners, nutrition, all them things, you know. Yeah, exactly. You know yourself, when, you, you, yeah. when you're on the diet. You, you spend a lot of money in fight you, camp, mate. You can oh, fucking, yeah. you could eat McDonald's for, for a camp and it'd be a lot cheaper than going to buy some fucking free-range chickens. Yeah, mate. Do you know like eating healthy is expensive. It is, mate. It is <laughs> massively. People don't realise that. You're paying that. for your, 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 your strength and conditioning. You're paying all these guys and everything. Like you said, you're sparring, sparring partners. partners. It's I mean, expensive to Sparring partners coming like 30, 40 pounds a round. Yeah. And then, you know, you do 10 rounds with them a few times a week. And then you've got the travelling expenses for them coming up to the gym. And then sparring partners are tailored for round your opponent in front of you. Yeah. Luckily enough, this opponent who, who, who stepped in at the last minute is not too dissimilar to, to Kanju. Like but, a, aggressive. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's not going to all go to waste, but fuck me. You know, if it, it would have been a lot differently, then it would have gone all tits up and yeah. frustrated. It's the frustrating side of the sport and this is where boxing is having its bit of a, a, a downfall. Not so much over here because over here it's booming. Yeah. It's never been as healthy. Since I've been a pro, it's never been as healthy. But in the States, that's why more people are turning to like sort of UFC yeah, and whatnot. Yeah, because yeah. It's massive, because you're seeing it, the best fighting the best and they're fighting for fucking peanuts. Yeah. They're fight, like Dana obviously controls it. They're fighting for a lot less than what we get paid. Yep. So you, you your thing of being great, it's as though everybody wants fucking Floyd Mayweather purses. 
but they're not willing to do the work that Floyd did. Yeah. Floyd hadn't just been around this last five, fo- he's, five six years. He's, he's had a fucking 25 year reign. Exactly. You know, it, people forget about the times when he was fighting likes of Arturo Gatti and, and the aggressive it. side to yeah. him. When he were, he were pretty boy, pretty boy Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, someone said that to me over day. He said that, you know, everyone wants to be uh, paid like money made, but nobody wants to be pretty boy. Exactly. You know, and I think that's fucking he's brilliant. He's fighting Corrales and everyone like that, man. They're unbelievable. They were, they were tough, tough fights, but he earned his stamp there and rightly so, he would deserve to get some them paydays. Long time, multi-weight world champion, but it seems everyone from like your can your Gary Russells, they all want a fucking in and out. Yeah. I understand that the, the sport's a taxing sport, but you can't keep on coming to the table demanding these silly purses when you're not bringing the fucking eyes to the sport. Yeah. So now you've got uh, this Mexican and obviously you can't overlook this guy. I know he's coming late, uh, but yeah. these are tough bastards out there, the Mexicans <laughs> and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? So you're still going to have a fight on your hands here. I suppose your job is now to fucking just stay focused on top of the game and putting a blistering performance really and then where do you see what's going to happen after this one then would you reckon he's still going to be there Zoo, or are you going to look elsewhere now well the, these meetings I've, I've been having these phone calls and zoom meetings today as, as as you know prior to coming to here so um yeah i've got i've got marisha laura there in front of me now like i say the mexicans are kind of like um the ties to your sport yeah. it's just like we love football over here. yeah we love we love football over here. Um, everyone plays football in the street. Oh, you just do when we were kids, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Like in Mexico, it's boxing in Thailand. It's Thailand. It's bred into him, like you say. Um, he's gonna come and fight, and they're the fucking tough bastards normally, and they're normally fit for twelve rounds. So I, I, I anticipate a, a tough fight, but at the same time, I've been training hard, and I want to put on a, a statement. Yeah. My last fight was around and a half and I liked that I, I him, liked mate. that <laughs> yeah. I've had my first into 12 rounds and yeah. now we start bringing these fucking big punches to the table so I won't mind uh, finishing the show early so obviously the, getting the W is the main thing but uh, if I could do it with a better style then then that's the aim um, but from here we'd like to think that well, I know that Eddie's definitely working on something, whether it be Gary Russell Jr., whether it be... That'd be good. Um, I know, whether it be... Uh, Need crowds back for that though, because I want to come Well, that. you know, and then and this is what, this is probably the only blessing that um, this fight's been postponed, because if it does come back later in the year, then fingers crossed by summertime, we should yeah. have some crowds back. Yeah. You know, I was thinking that we we're going to have crowds back anyway, because, you know, Leeds played Chelsea down in London just before Christmas, yeah, and there, there were some crowds, crowds there. Yeah, yeah. AJ had crowds there for these fights, so hopefully... Have when, you seen in Texas? Texas well, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm full, saying. Yeah. Yeah. It's full stadiums. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, granted, they, I mean the, the percentage of their stadiums, like it's a sixty thousand seat stadium. Yeah, so, yeah, true, you know, yeah. But, but surely, even I mean, you know what the Leeds lot are like. So if if, if, if there's only there's about thirty thousand of us already a flight to Vegas, man. I'm telling like, you, if, if, even if there were only a thousand in, in a stadium, then thousand like ten thousand yeah. easily. Especially when I had a few pints down yeah. there. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, you know, let's hope that. Fans can be there because I've had some. I've had some people who've been watching me fight and they've not missed a fight. They've sacrificed themselves, like going to weddings and stuff like that, just to be at my fight. So that means a lot, and I would like for them to be there if they can do. So hopefully, by the time we get this next one out of the way, Eddie should have some news for us. Right, good, good, good. So. What I'm going to do, I'm going to pull it back a little bit here. I'm not going to do what because uh, you recently did the James English podcast and that was yeah. a sick podcast. I watched that one. Um, you told all your full story on there and stuff like that. So I want this to be more like two fighters talking about fighting here, which is what we're going to do. Um, if anyone is interested in hearing your full story, though, I, I recommend that uh, James English is an amazing podcast with Josh. Uh, so go watch that and watch mine when that's out as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, you did everything. Shameless plug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shameless, mate, shameless. You did everything the hard way coming up in your career. Yes. The correct way, should yeah. I say. Yeah, yeah. English titles, defended them. Commonwealth and British, defended them. Then your international title, defended that about five times before you got a world title shot. Yep. And you fought some good guys, didn't you, when you were coming up? Mm-hmm. Who was your toughest fight when you were coming up like that? Because you fought people like Martinez and that were big punches and stuff. And uh, that you had some fucking tough fights when you were coming up, didn't you, really, yeah, as well? You, yeah. you did it the correct way yeah. to the top, didn't you? Yeah. I, I, you know, I think my old fella's always had a big influence on, on my career. And uh, he always said that there's no rush. There's no rush. And I think I've said this many times, when you look at some fighters, at like 15, you know, the, the, the men, they've got square jaws, got yeah. fucking air all over their body, you know what I mean? <laughs> they need a manscape. Yeah. You know I mean? <laughs> but, um, but me, I, I, was, I was 18, I still look like a, I still look like a young boy. Um, but I was fighting men. Mm. I was fighting. That's, that's what my granddad told me about you when you were about 18. He went, he's going to be world champion. He's yeah, Josh, yeah, he's yeah, going to be yeah, world champion. Yeah, yeah, he used to give us some uh, good advice about yeah. that. <laughs> what a guy. Uh, God, God rest man. his soul. Yeah, top, top, top man. <laughs> I think uh, coming through my hardest fight was probably Martin Lindsay. Yeah. Martin Lindsay because I had some... Was that British, an English title? Uh, that was a British. British title, I was yeah, a British. Yeah. Now, 
I'd had some pretty tough fights going up to there, like uh, the my English title against uh, Chris Mayall. I was away from home. I took like 80 odd people to watch me in his backyard. I had a tough, tough fight because I was going from a, a six rounder to a uh, 10 rounder. Now, when you see the pictures of me and him together, it's like that is fucking boy versus boy man. man. It's like, how, how are they both wearing the same? He, he look, just looked a lot thicker set than me. And have, it you would, been a, have you been at Featherweight your whole career? Yeah, yeah. yeah. To be honest with you, uh, Liam, I probably could have been Bantam. Yeah. I could have been Bantam. I could have been two divisions below what I am. But my old fella used to say, just trust me. And I'm thinking, well, I'm not even having a diet here. I'm walking into <laughs> a ring, you know what I mean? It's like, the size of these geezers <laughs> on fire. I mean, listen, when it comes to it, you'll be strong. He says, there's no point in you boiling down now. And when it, you get to an higher level, that you can't even make the weight. So I trusted this process. And it turns out I make fucking featherweight better than, yeah. than I ever have done. And I'm, I'm strong at it as well. People regard me as a, as a big, strong featherweight. So Your engine's unbelievable. Well, that's what I mean. There's no one it, else it, who it, can run a run through a fight like you from 1 to 12 and keep the same pace. And if I were taking X amount of weight off or too much weight on, then I wouldn't be able to do that pace. But the fact is, like, I'm not taking too much out of my body. So I'm not having to try build it all back in and getting into a ring, having put a stone on half on, just in hydrating. So uh, I think that's one of the reasons why I can do the the you know the pace work so well. But the Martin Lindsay fight, um, I'd won the English, I defended it a few times, I'd won the Commonwealth, I defended that against Rendon Monroe. Yeah, he was a world title challenger as yeah, well. Exactly, yeah, exactly, the boxing bin man. And we're in uh, Manchester for that one. And I think there were like six or 700 who had gone over to watch me. And... Uh, I remember going back to change rooms and Barry Hearn came in after and did like a bit of a fucking jig. Yeah. And he's like, we're going to fucking Leeds, baby. We're going to Leeds. And I'm like, what? So my manager came and he said, yeah, you're looking, we've got your British title of show. You're going to wear light show in, in, in Leeds. They're going to do it on a Wednesday night, which will be a little bit different because the boxing was always the arena? been on. That was at the, the arena. Yeah, the first time yeah, at the arena. Yeah, the right, the yeah, arena. Yeah. So um, the boxing's always been done on a Wednesday, uh, sorry, on a Friday or Saturday. Wednesday night show, it was just, I think they're trying to experiment. Um, with five weeks notice, I think we had about 3,000 there in, in Arena. Now, reason why I think it was such a tough fight is because I'd had a tough, tough camp getting ready for the Rendon Monroe fight. Um, I stopped him in seventh round and retired on stool and went straight back into it. Straight back into, in, 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 into camp, yeah. yeah. And uh, I was tired by the time the fight came. Now, everyone kind of thought it was a, a foregiven conclusion. I mean, at the time, I was living... Um, with my missus in her mum and dad's uh, back bedroom. Mm. And I remember like them leaving and saying, we'll see you later. We can't wait to see that British title. Oh, good luck. You just do, do the business hit him out. And, and I thought, no, I think it's just a fucking given. Yeah. You know, this, this, <laughs> yeah. this guy, Martin Lindsay, I'd been watching him knock the likes of Denny Matthews out where left ducks and they were asleep before they even hit the ground. Yeah. And I'm thinking, Wow, he hits me one of them. I don't know how I'm going to handle it. Handle it. You know, once you put them little like eight ounce gloves on, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking, yeah, exactly. I'm thinking this could be a tough fight. And my last couple of sparring sessions going into that fight, I want firing on all cylinders. I was feeling, I was feeling tired, not just physically but mentally as well. So we came into that one, and I was fucking nervous, mate. I was nervous because all I'd set my goal on was winning the British title. You know, just the Lord Lonsdale belt is a fucking beautiful it's belt. It's the one in it. Everyone and, wants one of them. Yeah, mate. It's one of the oldest belts in, 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 in boxing, in sport. You it's know, a beautiful fucking 1909, piece of work I think well, yeah. it's established. And wow, I, you know, I just wanted to hold that in my hand. I'd seen Gary Sykes win one. I'd seen Carl Johansson win yeah. one, you know, close up. And uh, and, and I'd like sparred with Jamie McDonald throughout the years, seen him win ease when I was his sparring partner. So I just wanted one of my own. Now, came into that fight with Martin and he was like hitting that fucking wall mate it was, <laughs> it, it was solid it was solid yeah. just a, a tough tough man he'd been there at the top of the of, of his game and just when I was landing shots on him even hitting his arms and his gloves just felt fucking solid now first four rounds I set off a blistering pace like I always do felt like I was going to move to a to a 12 round points win I thought that if I stepped it up, I could even get him out there because, you know, he won't come in back with too much, to be honest with you. And I was getting a lot of clean shot combinations. I was only like four, five, six punch combinations on him. Then in fifth round, he caught me with a body shot right in fucking <sighs> solar plexus, oh, right? not worse, man. I'd rather <laughs> get punch clean in face <laughs> than in body, yeah. man, I'm telling you. He would a killer. Right, so I took a step back, but within 10 seconds, he's hit me again yeah. to the liver. I thought I'm going down. Fucking hell, the wind completely out of my sails. So I've gone on my bike, I've gone back pedaling. I thought I'm giving it away all over my face, but when I've watched it back, I don't give well, too I, much grace. I was going to ask you about this. Have you ever been, this was going to be one of my questions to you. Have you ever been rocked or hurt in a fight? Because you either have got a steel chin or a poker face. Mate, because I've never, this, ever, I've never watched you fight and I've watched nearly all your fights and thought, oh, he's hurt. I've never, yeah, I've never yeah, seen yeah, it. Yeah, mate, this, this, this time, I mean, in the same fight, I'll get to on that second, I, I got it with a lot bigger shot. 
and didn't fucking yeah. didn't budge. But mate, I, I, I thought I'm going down. <laughs> Honestly, the, yeah. everything had gone out my legs. I mean. People who've been winded before should know. But it's a horrendous. It's a fucking when you've got <laughs> you, someone trying to take your head off yeah. as well. You can recover from pretty quick from a headshot if you get wobbled a little bit, but your body it takes a long time to, yeah. to get, especially in, in your liver, it takes you a, a fucking round or two to come <laughs> try and like, get back from that. Well, I, I, that's what I'm saying. I think it has a bit of a delayed effect on it. Yeah. So I, I've recovered. I can't, I'm starting to breathe again and I'm moving around the ring. I might manage to get power back in my legs and I'm able to throw shots again. But I've got a fucking right pain in my stomach. It's, it's just, it's agony. Now, I carry on going. About 10 seconds left, it catches me again. So <sighs> I go back to corner. My old fella knows I'm hurt. He yeah. pulls my gum shield out. He says, how are you feeling? I can't even fucking answer him. He's like, never mind that. He says, listen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> more or less. I'm like, can just give me a bit of water? Let me let me try to take some air in and take some fluid in. Takes my gum shield out. He says, listen to me. If you don't fucking get him... To, to body shot or slow him down in the first fucking 10 seconds then he's going to get you out of here lad he says you can say bye bye to your fucking British title yeah. he says as he comes slip his left hand drop inside and give him one to body he says you're going to have to get this off straight away Josh right, fair enough fucking just nodding away at him because I couldn't answer him in words <laughs> 10 seconds that 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 little uh, stint in the corner felt like about fucking five seconds yeah it's bad you know what I mean like, it, seconds it, out yeah, that's what I mean <laughs> it's, yeah. meant be, it's meant to be a minute but mate it could have been about five seconds so I get back up I can see him he's banging his clubs together I thought fuck here we go put my gum shield in he comes storming at me throws a jab I slip down said bang left up to body and he managed to slow him down he goes backpedalling and he gave me the rest of that round to just recover a little bit more then from then on he didn't really recover yeah as well as I did maybe that's testament to your conditioning that may, though, maybe it? so yeah maybe, maybe, maybe testament my conditioning as I were coming up a uh, young young hungry whippersnapper he yeah. was put towards back end of his career yeah. and I managed to see it out but later on in that fight like j me old fellow I call him Johnny I say Johnny he said to me he says fucking hell I thought you were out in 11th because he hit me with a right hand over the top now where my face was positioned my missus was sat ringside and she could see my face and he, I've thrown a jab, but I've dropped my right hand. Mm. And he's come over with the right hand over top, and I've walked straight onto it. And she said, she looked at it, and she seen my eyes roll up back in my head. <laughs> right? My dad says, when he was watching it, when that shot landed, he turned away because mm. he fucking expected to turn back around and see You'd me on fucking yeah. waiting to it. Two, yeah. three. <laughs> but I just fucking rode it. Do you know what I mean? I was, I've I, never seen you wobble from a shot. Never. No, no, listen. I've, I've, I've never been down in a sparring session or in a fight I've never been buzzed where my legs have gone yeah. you know I've, I've, I've taken quite pride in that now that's I don't know if that's a co accumulation of hard sparring sessions in, in, in an early age you know what's fucking yeah. grew a bit of resilience whether it's my old fella who used to thrash me yeah let's <laughs> yeah, nine baby yeah if I didn't pick the dog shit up in garden yeah, yeah. I'd have one of them but I don't know I listen to them which has always been one of my good attributes but it's always been overlooked I've always been yeah. a handle the shot the fight against Carl when we, we he was bouncing shots off my chin in the first two rounds yeah hardly made a dent in me and even in the third round he moved a straight you right had him all over in round like, one as well that's what I mean yeah. so these these uh, I've always like being pretty confident I've never wanted to take one clean but if I have taken one I've always been able to ride it you know yeah yeah so I'm pushing forward a little bit now we're going towards the Selby fight because yeah. this seemed like he was just fucking avoiding you for ages to me yeah, and to all yeah, yeah. to all yeah, fans yeah. and stuff yeah, yeah. do you think he was because it was like everything you said right after you win this fight we've got Selby and then they throw someone else in front of you yeah. and then someone else and he yeah. were always just trying to like duck and dodge and it, it lasted away from you for as long as possible didn't he I yeah, felt yeah Ellen Road biggest boxing event leads has ever seen talk us to us a little bit just about that oh man I mean just to get the fight it were it were exciting you know yeah. I mean like you said I'd, I'd wanted it for a long time um the the grudge if if, if, it, if it was kind of started back in 2014 we were down at um match room match room barbecue like of AJ were down there Calbrook Tony Bell you they all all the faces were down there um and Sky got me and Lee together and uh, I went to go shake his hand after we did an interview and he just fucking looked looked at me like I was a piece of shit what a prick. so like right it's fucking <laughs> on you know what yeah. I mean and then as we went on as we went on um you know he'd slid some snide comments about me I had mm. some snide comments about Ian so it started to really bubble then it's got a bit nasty now 2016 um we got offered the fight uh, against Selby um, after I beat Amagasa now at the time I was getting married two weeks after and my, my old fellow like listen ideally I want your head just don't fight I want you fucking going off we all last <laughs> you know fucking talk, talking about bunting and decorations <laughs> and that and your head needs to be on the fight so I went right fair enough so I said well listen see if we can change the day if not then it is what it is and I'll have to fucking switch on next minute I'm cutting grass in my back garden my fucking phone starts going mad 
ping, 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 ping. People, Josh switched Sky, Sky Sports News on, goes in, switched back Sky Sports News on. And in other news, Josh Warrington has declined the fight because due oh. to wedding commitments. And I'm like, wow, what the oh, fuck? I remember that. I remember what what the fuck. People are saying like, you've bottled it because of your wedding and, you know, you, you do, didn't really want to fight. He said something about it. I remember oh watching an interview God, about it and he fucking said something about it. calling the Leeds fans and shit like that. So I'm like, I'm fuming. I'm front front of my manager. I said, listen, get on front of the wedding now. Tell him we'll have the fucking fight. We'll fight him straight away. <laughs> I bet your missus were fuming oh, watching it. <laughs> like, listen, boy, listen, this needs to be done. I, I need to do business. You know, I can't, can't let him slag me off like this. You know, I've got personal pride in as well as everything yeah, else so yeah. I said I don't give a fuck I have to walk down now with a fucking massive egg on my head I've got to I've got to have that <laughs> fight comes back a few days later no you've missed your opportunity they don't want to fight you they don't want to fight you so that was it so we had to go the long way round um, how many fights did you have in between that one and then actually yeah. getting the fight three or well, four I, I boxed I boxed uh you got Martin in between. Yeah, that I'd, I'd, well, I'd, yeah, I had uh, Ireland in between that. Then I had a bit of a break because I'd left. I'd left. Oh, I'd left Matchroom, Sam with Frank Warren. Then I had Martinez, so I'd live a month out there. Then I had uh, Dennis Ceylan. So like three fights before I got round to that one. But when it fight like two years later from that original thing, and then yeah. four years in the I making, bet you were fucking seething. But it, I'm, I'm coming, mate, I'm coming. it'd been it'd been talked about for a long time, and obviously he'd boxed in between that, and he had to win because if yeah. he got beat, then. The fight was done. You know, there were talks of him moving up weight. So yeah, he's humongous for that weight. Oh, mate, How the fuck did he make that weight? I once, I once seen him. I once seen him in like a, a bit of a fucking meet and greet thing, and it just the size of him. You know, fucking massive. But, I remember uh, at the press conference because uh, we all came, and I mean, and with Danny Towers and all that at the press conference, yeah. and he got some fucking stick yeah, that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I remember when he stood up, and I thought, fucking hell, he's yeah, massive. Yeah, yeah. That, but that, I think that's where one of his massive advantages. Yeah. People used to say he's a massive featherweight, and it worked well for him until he until, until he got to me. Your style, yeah. yeah. Exactly, yeah. and, and the thing is, are we prepared for that? I mean, I had I had welterweights coming into spar. I mean, some of the people who were coming in, I'm like, Dad, we sparred him, and I, I mean, yeah, what's up with you? Like, fucking <laughs> massive That's the brain damage, Dad. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> His fucking calves are bigger than my waist. <laughs> <laughs> but to be honest with you, it 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 paid me in a good in a good set because. By the time I got used to these spying partners, I was throwing them about yeah. and I was landing good shots with them. Bit of a and breath of fresh air yeah, by the time yeah, he and, came along. And when they were landing punches on me, it was like, fucking hell, I could take that, I could take that. Then when we were coming into clinches and we were wrestling and stuff like that, I was almost holding my own. Yeah. So by the time that he got in, he looked like a skinny prick. You bullied him, man. Do you know what I mean? And when, yeah. it, when he came in, everyone was saying, I was massive featherweight. You know, I was a 4 to 1 underdog. Yeah. When he came into the ring and he took his gown off, like, Fuck me. Yeah. Just stay at your yeah. man. <laughs> <laughs> how, how did that make you feel going in as an underdog? Did you thrive off that? Because yeah, Because yeah. you were an underdog against Frampton as well, weren't you? By the bookies. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. massively. Did, did massively. you thrive off that? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It, it was a case of, listen, I, I had pals who probably didn't think I was going to win. They wanted me to, but they probably didn't think I was going to do. Mm. They were probably listening to what everyone else was saying. Yeah. The, the boxing experts, the media, four to one, mate. I mean, I remember speaking to someone after the fight and who works in the media, and he said, we asked... 80 media outlets and boxers and promoters and managers and trainers who the thought you were going to win he said out of the 80 only 6 of them picked you fuck only 6 of them now they, they published the column like 7-6 to Selby but he said they had, we had, they had to ask 80 people for their opinion you and know. fucking only saying that 6 of them picked me well the thing is with Selby though if you stand off him he will make you look a mug because he's so skilled yeah. your style you didn't give him any room whatsoever but, but, the, but this is the thing for years me and my dad had been watching him Mm. And we'd, we'd made little notes on him. Now, he took piss out of that. He took the piss out of the fact that I'd been making notes on him. But fucking fool, more fool him because yeah, it, yeah. You know, it paid off for us. We were seeing things that he was doing and other fighters weren't capitalising on. Like, he'd drop his left hand and he'd put that shoulder roll on like Mayweather. Mayweather but style, but yeah. he wouldn't do it as well as Mayweather. Yeah. And he'd always go the same way. He'd always step off to his right and then he'd lower back up and come up with a straight right hand. Now, what the fighters weren't doing were following him. And as, as he was changing over, they'd still be static and he'd come over, chop him with a choppy right hand and then fuck off again and then I'd go other way. But we, our, sh our game plan was to go down his uh, left hand side, get our choppy right hand over and when he takes that side to step across, we go again, chop him with another one and then he won't have fucking nowhere to go. We knew that in long range, like you've got three ranges, in long range, it's his all day long. Mid range is mine, short yep. range is mine. Yep. You know, so... We had to get past that long range. Now, he's very effective on the feet. So we did a lot of working on uh, footwork, getting in there, getting in there, yeah, trying to him draw him stuff. off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and not many people really talk about that, but you go back back and watch that fight. You watch for the first two rounds, you'll see how we draw him in and the way that I close him down and then chop him with the right hands. I mean, Towards the end of the fight, he was saying I was twatting him now back no, ahead. He, 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 he wanted yeah. out, mate. He hated it. He, he hated every minute of that he fight. He was saying I was twatting him back ahead now. Legal shots. Uh, front of your face and down the sides, mm. right? You can't hit Brian the head. 
But as he was turning and I was drawing right hands down here, I was hitting him on the ear side and the side of the head. Perfectly legal punches. Any other punches what were in round back were only because he was turning. Yeah. But he just couldn't he couldn't master it. I knew from the first round when I went back to the corner, I'd felt his power. I could see his shots coming. I could cut his distancing down. And when we came in a tangle, like I say, it was weak as piss. So I, I knew the fight was mine. It was up to me to carry on throughout the fight and, 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 and stay switched on. It was, if I was going to do anything wrong, that was the only way I was going to lose that fight. Mm. But um, like going into it, I felt my career was red on that, Liam. You know, because yeah, like, yeah. from the outset, I was just, oh, Josh weren't in the fucking ticket seller. You know, he's going to get his head boxed off. Um, Selby's going to dismantle him in front of his Leeds fans. Mm. Listen, mate, I wouldn't have been able to go down Ellen Road again <laughs> if I'd got my ass tanned. You <laughs> know what I mean? Go fucking down your club in the Ellen Road. I swear to <laughs> God, could you imagine that? Fucking <laughs> hell. Going for a piss at half time. Hey, up, Josh. Yeah. Hell, what happened? What happened, mate? <laughs> like, oh, no, every time Not you go again. down. Yeah, exactly. So, there weren't a lot riding on me, a lot of pressure, but... You know, I think you've held that together absolutely. Yeah, I want the best bo nights of boxing I've ever been to me because I were absolutely fucking steaming ringside, <laughs> mate. I want me and our Andy and a few of my mates were sat yeah, ringside. Yeah, yeah. Tyson Fury, we just sat right there. We're yeah, like surreal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. were fucking brilliant. I were like the best. One of the, like, what the best night of boxing I've been to that. I appreciate so, so that. God mate. knows how you felt that. after yeah, that, mate. Yeah. You must have been on a high for weeks. I think a lot of people from who were there, it were the, like the, it was prior to Bielsa, you know, Bielsa was coming in that last season for, yeah. for Leeds United fans. I remember loads of people inboxing me saying after, what a fucking night you've brought. You've brought like a buzz back to Ellen Road, what's not been there for a long time. People like, who may, who lads my age, they were saying that the granddads were in tears. Yeah, Saying yeah. a fucking local lad do something like that. I mean, the, I looked the, around and loads were, mate, the, it was unbelievable. The, the, the day had something special about it. I mean, I remember one of my, pals coming down to see me and now I always stay on all on fight day just because it, it takes me out of my comfort zone do you know what I mean if I were at yeah. home I'd be fucking hoovering or something to <laughs> take my mind off it <laughs> cleaning toilet so, but um, it takes my mind off it I just you know I'm in a hotel and then one of my mates came and seen me and a few lads had been into town already had been on, on, um, on pace and one of them said listen Josh no matter what happens mate he said you want to be proud of yourself he said fucking town is buzzing every bar is buzzing all yeah. chanting your name everyone's going to fight he said you've done that not a football not a football team not a fucking big organisation just a single man has done that I'm like fucking on cheers lads and as we were driving down to the, to the ground it'd been a nice day anyway weather wise yeah, class, they'd mate. been raw wedding on that day FA Cup final had been on yep. and as we were driving along fucking just I remember being on, on minibus what were taking us we had blacked out windows like so no one could see me but I could see out and people walking like beast down beast and hill there were fucking people selling like scarves with me, me face on it and selby's face on it there was just a buzz around there like fuck me what, no, there wasn't what, been anything like that since ricky Atten used to fight mean, what, what, what have we created here yeah. from a fucking daft lad who used to run on from john smith and school <laughs> 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 with his running shoes in his back to fucking 20 odd thousand there kaiser chiefs playing as there lucas rather be doing ring walk yeah. like wow these are fucking surreal moments and there was a little bit of a moment after the fight about three o'clock in the morning now all um, big wigs and, and, and uh, executives from Ellen Road had, had said, come for a drink. So there were me and my team, we're all in there, uh, because there were no after parties going on really. Like, so we went went back into the boardroom and uh, I'd gone out to, to watch all the fucking shit being taken down. So weeks and weeks of planning, all the, the ring being put up and the uh, scaffolding all erected, they were all taking that down and it was half three in the morning. And I'm stood looking out to pitch and one of the chief executives of Leeds United's there pissed up and, he's, <laughs> and one of my best pals is outside of me. And we're all looking at him, we're just all in silence. Like, fuck me. All that years yeah. of planning has come down to this woman and it's, and it's done. But mate, for two days, I didn't I didn't sleep. Yeah, you know, I, 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 you know, I We went back to, I normally have a fucking McDonald's. Like some people go and get pissed up. Yeah. I don't do it because I just, I fear of like fucking having a bleed on brain and then being pissed up. Yeah, and that. So yeah, yeah. I always just have a McDonald's and then everyone was exhausted with emotions and everything after. So I remember just going back to my hotel room and all and, all and, and watching Sunrise. Just fucking, I've just taken it all in. My ears were still fucking ringing. I didn't sleep, like I say, for two days after. I mean, them moments will stay with me for the rest of my career. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, it was a real night. And I think people who were there remember it as well as somewhat special. After that, you fucking didn't stop there. You did not like look for a first easy title defence. No, like no. some people do, they'll win a title and they'll think, right, I'll get a few easy defences yeah. before I, I decide what I'm going to do. Straight away, out of your comfort zone, weren't even in Leeds, it were over in Manchester, you'd been in yeah. Leeds, fighting Leeds for so long as well, straight out of your comfort zone, against one of the fucking most gifted boxers this side of the, <laughs> yeah. the shores, yeah. Carl Frampton, everyone wrote you off again, and you did a fucking job on him in that fight, <laughs> I'll never, again, I came, came over that, and I had right good seats in the front of that, and I'll never yeah, forget yeah. that first round when you wobbled yeah, him, yeah. I'm like, he's gonna fucking knock him out, <laughs> he's gonna knock him out, um, 
how did the build up to that again because you must you just showed no fear in that fight and again yeah. I think people were thinking he, oh he might be a bit skilled Frampton and you yeah, just yeah. bulldozed him yeah so I, well after after going back to change rooms with the belt like with Selby I put that down and I'm like fucking I've done it you know my kids had just been born like 12, 12 weeks beforehand and but, but as soon as I, I stood up after after that like right who's next yeah and I was genuine about that like I never fucking thought I'd, I'd get to a stage where I'm fighting for a world title now you want to keep on fighting the best yeah. I love boxing Liam I love it but I want to see the best fighting the best I get hard on when I watch fucking Mar uh, Barrera <laughs> fight Morales yeah, I man. watch that constantly you know what I mean it's, when you're watching that as a kid you used to make airs on back of next stood up when you know, used to go around to your granddad's house and you used to talk about great fights mm. you want to be part of them big names now yep. after they beat um, Selby People were still saying, oh, you got lucky. Oh, Selby will wait during, oh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, it's because you boxed in your hometown, blah, blah, blah. I still felt like I had a lot to prove. I, I was still ranked number two behind Carl, even though I were world champion. Yeah, yeah he didn't have a title at that no, time. No, he didn't did have he? a title, yeah, yeah. but he, he was ranked number one in all. He only had one else. loss at that time against Santa Cruz. That's what he? I mean, yeah. That so is... it's like, we'd gone and sat down with, with Frank Warren. He's like, this could be a very big money fight for you, blah, blah, blah. Um, if you don't fight him now, then you could miss his opportunity, blah, blah, blah. So like, you know what, Steve, let's fucking have, let's have it. To manager. Yeah. Let's have it. For me, dad, what dad, what do you reckon? Like, yeah, fucking we'll have it. Now, when we're going over to Windsor Park in build up and watching him against Luke Jackson, he stopped Luke Jackson by eight rounds for a body shot. And I'm like, listen, fucking, I can't wait for this yeah. one. It's going to be a barnstormer. Then as the fight gets closer and closer, you know, you, you can't help it sometimes. It's natural. Doubt's still creeping. Yeah. You start listening to other people and you think, fucking hell, maybe I'm a little bit too much out of my depth. Maybe I should have just had a steady defence. But then I thought, no, there's a reason why you fucking signed up to this fight. It's because you know you can beat him. Yeah. You believe you can beat him. And uh, people say, no, no, tell me one level, but Carl's a fucking other different entity. He's a two-weight world champion. He but he's Boxed ears off of Leo Santa Cruz. Josh ain't gonna have a fucking prayer against him. So yeah, they were two great fights. Yeah, with Santa yeah, Cruz, yeah, really it? good fights. He obviously beat Scott Quigg. He's boxed yeah, Kiko yeah. Martinez twice. He's, he's boxed in front of a big crowd. So he knows that one on that occasion. So a lot of people again once were writing me off. I think I would have fought to one on yeah, that one. Really? And uh, it'd been a long year because obviously in that year, I'd been, like I say, my kids had been born. I'd had a movie come out, um, which took a lot of like promotion and things like that. I had the Selby fight coming out, and then by Back in the year, I was fucking mentally exhausted, mate. I was, I was tired for that one. My last couple of sparring sessions leading up to that one, I was fucking... My last one sparring session, actually, the week before the fight, was dog shit. Yeah. Like, I thought I was going to do like a steady six rounds. My dad forced me to do 10. <laughs> and he was like, one of them where I were fucked yeah. after five rounds. He went, listen, I don't fucking care. You're doing another five rounds. And it, one of them, what, I had to dig deep mentally. And uh, and I'm like, fucking hell, Dad, it's a sparring session. I'm fucked. So yeah. like, just get the rounds done, you little twat. Yeah. <laughs> and I managed to do them. And we and that, we quiet down. Now, I remember on the day of the fight thinking, I remember watching you back in fucking summertime, Carl, and I know that you like it your own way. Now, we'd, mm. we'd, we'd planned for a fast start, but I knew that it needed to be even fucking faster than fast. Yeah. It needed to be not just ease into it. I need to fucking jump on him every time, any, any opportunity. Now, catch him cold. I remember saying, walking into um, venue, my dad would already got down there early to change rooms. I remember getting up there and saying, dad, fast start tonight. I went, what do you mean? I went, we're having a fast start tonight. I went, yeah, I know, silly bollocks, but don't get fucking carried <laughs> away, you know what I mean? So he's wrapping my hands and he's like, he's looking at me. He said, listen, if you're going to go for a fast start, this is how we're going to do it. So we're going through a few things. Anyway, there would have been a tension in change rooms. I think everyone else realised what we're coming up against. Like you yeah. say, Carl's a fucking massive name. Mm. You know, if he goes on and wins this next fight, he'll be an all the fucking firm fighter. Yeah, free you know weight I mean? world. Like, yeah, free weight world champion. This is, this, this is it. And, and, and I could, I think even some of my team members were a little bit fucking nervous about this. We're going to go anyway. We, I remember just being behind that fucking behind the shutter. Right, Carl's already walked to ring. There's me, Liam Cooper, all team had already ring to walk into. Me and Liam Cooper and fucking sound guy for BT. Barrier goes out, we walk out, fucking, there's half of it's uh, Leeds fans, half of it's Irish fans, yeah. what a noise, yeah, I'm like, wow, this is fucking yeah. booming, it's like, I'd watched Gro uh, Fortune Grove five years before the uh, fight there, yeah, 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 I mean, you, you know yourself, that one hell of an atmosphere, yeah. I'm thinking, wow, this is something special, so I get in a ring, and they're doing introductions, I'm fucking just buzzing to have like, this big occasion like this, I've got a box office fight, I've sold out Manchester, fucking first world title defence against fucking Carl, who I've, I've admired watching over the years, yeah, Look over at Carl and I can see him. Mm. Now, the day before the weigh-in, 
when we've gone into Ed, I've said to him, I've looked straight into his soul and I've said to him, listen, Carl, we've got fucking war tomorrow. I wonder what you were saying to him. Said, we're going go. to war tomorrow. Yeah. And he was like, oh, fucking believe me, I'm ready for it. And I knew he was genuine right there because I could see it fucking veins getting worse and, worse and worse and we shook hands mm. and he didn't half fucking grasp, grasp my hand so yeah. I knew he meant what he said that we were going to war now the next day when I was stood in the ring and I was eyeballing him he never took his eyes off me mm. so my dad went listen he's fired up for this one he's fired up for the you have your fucking wits about in the years in this first round ding first round goes I said to myself right here we go and I'm watching now Carl's got a brilliant judge of distance yeah. fantastic judge of distance he's only shot in height but the way that he opens his legs and dictates with a jab. He's always been able to be so successful, so successful over the years. So I'm thinking to myself, if I go forward, I've got to be either really fucking quick or I've not got to stop going forward. Yeah, I've just got to keep on going yeah. to the stops. So for a minute or two, I think about a minute and 20, I'm land I've landed a few jabs. I've got my range. I'm getting there. He's trying to close me down. I've come back a little bit. I'm getting an idea of my distance, just working into it, working into it. I feel faint. He's reacted. Few of them thing. He's reacted. So, all right, here we fucking go. About a minute and a half, inbuilt clock's gone. I thought, yeah, I'm fucking, I'm going for yeah. it. I've pushed forward. He's pushed back and then he's like pivoted off to the side, but I've pivoted with him and gone. As he's pivoted, he stopped. And I didn't think he fucking, I don't think he thought that I was going to do that. Yeah. As he stopped, I've just let a fucking bad eye just punch his uh. go. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've chatted to him after and hearing some of the stuff interviews that he's done. He was shocked. He to, said he was hurting yeah, that in did. that first he bout. Said he, he said I couldn't believe how hard you it. But I, yeah. I, I want. I didn't expect. I didn't think I'd had, had him hurt. To be honest yeah. with you, I didn't think I had him hurt. I just thought, yeah. I've didn't got. you hear all those like crowd? Well, I know, I know. Stop him! I knew you was all giddy in that, but I didn't think I'd had him hurt. Now it wasn't until the second round when I went again when I hit him with a like a right hook. He kind of kind of come to hit me with a left hook, and I my short right hook hit him first so he kind of came onto a punch and I hit him with that one he fell onto me yeah. I thought he's fucking going <laughs> and you know in eat a battle sometimes things slow right down yeah, so yeah. for me in my mind we're going do I plant myself and try to look for one big bomb <sighs> or do I fucking go for accumulation now I thought I'll go for accumulation I went yeah. for the latter and I just started throwing loads because I thought if I just catch one or two of them make him a bit fucking dizzy and leave more openings because he just he went short and he tooked up mm. so I was for an accumulation and, and went round the side of him I was stepping angles credit to him champion he is he stood and planted himself and went out fucking trading yeah. with me which made it a fantastic it a fight. fight yeah, yeah it, it made it a fantastic fight. fight but I fucking love that mate I mean there were times in that fight when I was smiling inside you know when we're up on ropes this is all I'd wanted I'd wanted to show my strength I wanted to show that I could punch and I wanted to win and say in the fans and I mean, the, the noise, in, I mean, you were there yourself, it were yeah. up and fucking down, mate, up yeah, and down. Yeah. His fans were screaming one minute, my fans were screaming next minute, and what a fight it was, but uh, loved it, absolutely loved that one. So them two big fights there, you've just fucking shot up to superstardom with that one. But then you had to fight Kid Galahad. Yes. Did you feel like with that one, because I know we wanted to get you all to America, right? we were all fans were like, America next, America. Did you feel like maybe you're taking two steps forwards, then maybe one step back with that? I know you were unbeaten and stuff, but... I, we all wanted to just to see you get out there, fight Gary Russell and people like that. Yeah. And uh, but to be honest, I'd never wanted anyone to punch someone's head straight off the shoulders <laughs> so bad because yeah. they'd just been talking shit for years, yeah, yeah, hadn't yeah, he? As well, yeah, how did yeah. you feel going into that fight? Because um, his style as well is awful. He's Ingle style. Yeah. Yeah. The, the spoilers. Yeah. The, the, the spoilers, negative fighters. That's right, mate. The, that's right. And the the try to snatch. Yeah. The try to snatch the fight. The yeah, win. The steal the win. Yeah. And they do other things as well. Like the try got his skin. They, yeah. try a lot of, they play a lot of mind games. And when you look back to, like, so Nazim Ahmed, he yeah. used to do it with the way he used to taunt the fighters. Now, Naz were his own entity. A lot of the Ingle fighters have tried to go down that same route and it, they've not done it as well. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Galad is, is, is trying to be another Naz, yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, listen, I didn't want the fight originally because he's a fucking drug cheat. Yeah, exactly, you know, mate. He's a yeah, convicted exactly. drug cheat. Yeah. And I mean, like, you know, it's steroid use. You, you shouldn't. You shouldn't get you, another shot after you that. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. I mean, my. I know. I know that we've got like drug cheats around us, and, and, and the sport still goes on. But the thing is, if you, you get know, caught, that should be it. Because you're enhancing your body to hurt someone better. <laughs> exactly. It should be attempted <laughs> murder. <laughs> this is my <laughs> argument. This is my argument. Like I, I, I had an interview with a with a with a uh, track track athlete. Now she fucking been promoted to a to a bronze medal after 30 years of mm. finishing fourth place the Russian athlete who got third has fucking been stripped now her life could have been different if she'd have got that bronze medal yeah. she might have got more sponsors she might have been able to got some TV work financially it might have changed her life yeah. but she's still living and breathing she's moved on the difference with this is 
like in any fucking combat sport, you go in there to work. You to man. Hurt him, yeah. like you say, if you kill somebody and you fucking used an enhancing product, you murder, 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 exactly, murder, exactly, yeah. exactly. So you know, th there's a lot. Ninety eight percent of the like combat sports in boxing, they're, they're all fucking train hard, eat clean, and just live the life, and that's how they're going. But there's them sneaky bastards now. Wherever money's involved in, in in sport, there's always going to be cheats. Yeah, you know, I've fucking watched the film Icarus, and you'll no, see mate, that. Fuck me. You know, that's you know, scandalous. Yeah, exactly. All Russians and that. It's outrageous, <laughs> isn't it? That whenever there's there's whenever there's fucking intelligence and, and there's chemists, who will they'll take a little fucking thirty grand, forty grand backhander when there's multi million pass, uh, pound purses, then there's always going to be a little fucking side bending and stuff. So I didn't want to give him that shop anyway, right? He was a manager challenger, so I had to. I otherwise I've had to fucking vacate the belt. And, you know, it was the next one, really, from Britain, it was, it was up there. The rest of them, there's a bit of a gap, you know yeah. what I mean? So, all right, we'll take care of business with him, and then we there's no excuses then. No one's going to fucking hold me back. I can go on. Did what I had to do. I boxed him twice as an amateur. Now, mm. the first time I boxed him as an amateur, it was like the last fight I had with him was fucking erratic. Mm. Second time I boxed him, I just fucking picked, picked, picked his head off. Yeah. Now, I knew him as an amateur, and he was always quiet and well spoken and stuff. All of a sudden, he's fucking got this gob about him, and he's like just talking all kinds of nonsense. Like what you and said shit. He was trying to be naz, yeah, yeah, just trying to be naz and trying to get under my skin. And yeah, there was a little bit of me wanting, maybe sometimes, fucking my emotion got better than me, and I wanted to fucking really hurt him when yeah. I punched him. But I did what I had to do. You know, I won the fight. Um, for all those who, who, who've seen it, oh, wait, fucking, I'm thinking he might have got it. Well, that's your opinion. But when you come down to stats and statistics exactly. and facts, yeah. you know, CompuBox, the, the, the punch uh, scoring system, what fucking is used throughout the world, shows that I landed about 78 more punches than, exactly. than what he did. So exactly, yeah. if you want to go on that, then that's what it is. Um, so I won that fight and, and you know, it, it, were, it were annoying that I had to... I had to have a fight like that, especially when you've been through the Selby fight and the Frampton fight. Two fight of the year con, uh, candidates, actually one fight of the year for the Frampton fight mm. and then you go into a fight like that, it does leave it a little Someone bit Someone running around ring yeah, fucking, devastating. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, when you look at the early stages of the fight, there were little, I mean, credit to him, credit to him, he did some things walk through me, like he kept on standing on my fucking toes. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like standing on my toes, like um, inside, um, well, when we're coming to clinches, it was, it was, I was surprised how I wasn't able to get out as quickly as yeah. I thought because he was able to get me in some old and then he put me in an headlock and he was doing little things like he'd fucking put his hand under and he'd grab in my nose and yeah. shit like that, you know, and, just, and he would like, as... Uh, just trying to get headlock, a bit of a yeah, fucking, mental edge and Just, that, just yeah. wind me up constantly and I, no, at times I was getting frustrations but no, I like to think I'm mentally strong I was able to switch back on. Yeah. The referee gave him a bollocking, he gave him a second warning with three rounds in. Now, after the second warning, there should be a third, which means a point deducted. Yeah. If he'd have given that point deduction, that would have changed the whole co course of the fight because he wouldn't have been able to hold and use him spoiling tactics. Yeah. Now, after seven rounds, I mean, he couldn't punch for shit anyway, but after seven, everything went down. You know, his pace went down. He stopped coming forward. He went on, just went on the back foot. Like I say, he would hardly throw in anything. So I knew in the championship rounds, I took it. Yeah. His corner team would not shut the fuck up all throughout the fight until it comes to the last few and they just went silent. After the fight, back at changing rooms and this is the bit that other people don't see. No, but credit from his fucking team. No, yeah. Even from him, I'm like, listen, Barry, what were the fuck all that about? Now his, <laughs> his name is Barry, Barry yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, oh, you were slagging me off calling me Barry from Sheffield. I said, it's your fucking name. <laughs> you it's, are, like calling yeah. it's like, I'm Josh from Leeds. You're yeah. Barry from Sheffield doing, yeah, I know, but uh, I said, whatever, mate, fucking best. <laughs> he said, listen, we boxed for fucking plastic trophies years ago. We boxed for world title and we've been paid. Let's just be happy, blah, blah, blah. You know, it sold the fight. I said, listen, dickhead, the fight didn't need selling you don't need to sell you know a fight, exactly the, the fight then people turn up regardless yeah. fucking if yeah. you're there or not and just made yourself look more of a cunt but, yeah exactly but, mate. exactly but that were it and then you know since since that he's been fucking spouting again but this career is is not a long career Liam yeah. and like you said I want to the fans want to see me go out and fight fucking those who follow my career want to see me go out and fight the other names around the world don't want to go over fucking old dust you know I used to think to myself right I'll go as far as I can and when I fucking start getting shit and start getting beat at the top level, I'll come back down and I'll try to win the British title again and win it outright so it's mine to keep because mm. I never got the opportunity to do that. I moved on straight away for European. Since I had kids, that fucking, which changed a little bit, it's like, right, you know what, I fucking think I'll retire at the top. Mm. You know, I've got opportunity now to be unified champion, opportunity to be potentially be a, go on and be there a two-weight world massive champion. massive fights out there for that's you That's what now, I mean. It's like, you're that's, on the teetering a bit, and, yeah. and I still, I still feel that I ain't given 100% in it, every one of them. Mm. 
I'm still waiting. Now, my missus calls me a fucking sick bastard for this, but I'm still waiting for one of them fights where I'm going to drag myself off a stool in the 12th round and I'm fucking cut, <laughs> bleeding from ears and I'm having to really dig deep and, and go into them fucking like canisters in your head where you're like, how bad do you really want this? Yeah. I'm still yet to have that. I've had it in stages of fights, but I've never been like that deep. Because I, you're the one with the fucking engine. Like, you, you, they're the ones <laughs> who are thinking, oh, fuck, I can't get him off, mate. I can't get him off. But, I, but, but like, I, I'm, I'm wanting that fight, you know, I'm, I'm yeah. wanting that. When that fight comes and I'm like, fucking feel like I've no more to give, then I'm like, right, you know, maybe it's time. But I'm still away for that and I still feel like I haven't even brought 100% to the table yet. So, you know, I feel, and I still feel like I'm getting better and better. I'm still getting stronger and stronger. So, like you're, fucking you're mate, now, mate. I'm just I'm, getting pubes now. <laughs> well, a male athlete is in the prime from 29 to 34, they say, yeah, don't yeah, yeah, So, yeah, you've still yeah, got a fucking yeah, few, yeah, yeah, good yeah. few years. You haven't took much punishment. No. Like you said, you've never been down, yeah. never been really badly rocked. So, like, the, the time is now to get you, well, when we've got a crowd, the time is then. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. um, which one of these fights in your division do you see as the one that's going to like really break you in America right over there, like Gary Russell or like? How do you feel about Santa Cruz as well being able to go up to fight Tank, but didn't he still be able to keep his belt? That's disgraceful. Mate, how man. do you feel about? I've that? had a fucking rant about this now. I bet. Like, listen, some of, I don't know if I can say some of the stuff because I said some of the stuff what I said in an interview, <laughs> right? And next minute I will get in fucking phone call saying you'll have lawsuits against you <laughs> <laughs> but some of the shit you've said so I'll try to be careful about what I say, I say now but I think he's a fucking I've lost a lot of respect for him as a fighter listen I've enjoyed watching him yeah. uh, you know Mexican like freeway world champion as it is I think he started off at Bantam Bantam Super Bantam and, and Featherweight now yeah. now again this is what's disgraceful about fucking boxing over the year, the last 10 years, it's fucking boomed. You know, fighters have become household names. You know, they've been involved with sponsors. People talk about fucking boxers like royalty now, you know? And years ago, when I first turned pro, that it won't like that. It won't fucking like that at all. Now, it was always the States. Fighters from the States were the A-side. Yeah. It was always, if you got a chance to go over to the States, then you were the fucking made it. The only people who were doing it when I was coming through were fucking Atten yeah. and uh, Atten, David A, Joe Calzaghe. Yeah. You know, it everyone else were like oh fucking good luck but they're always fucking massive underdogs now we're dictating shots I don't know if it's like inspiration from the last few Olympics I don't know if every, all the fights seem to have ramped up the training now people have got strength conditioning coaches people are doing the diet properly people are living the life in yeah, between fights yeah they've always fights. been a, a, like a level ahead in America yeah, yeah, we've caught yeah, them up yeah, exactly, now, yeah. yeah and, 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 and it's like hold on a minute, fucking, he's done it and he's done it and he's done it. Now the fighters over here are fucking fearless. Like, yeah, yeah. listen, I dare to be great. Imagine only... imagine like a time when the two best heavyweights in the world are English. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know There's what never mean? been exactly. heard really, has Exactly. It? It's fucking very healthy. Mm. It's very healthy. Now, it's the, some of the governing bodies are, are based over in the States and it's this kind of shit what's fucking ruining the spot over there. Mm. And that's why more people are turning into the MMA because they're seeing best fighting the best yeah. and that's all that we want to see you know you've got like Crawford and Errol Spence there yeah. why the fuck's it that's you know the fight I mean? mate because that is of, the fight because of fucking TV networks and because of governing bodies it's not happening and that, they shouldn't squash all that politics bollocks and put it to, to bed now one of the reasons why Kanju wanted to pull out was because we was going to be fighting for Leo Santa Cruz's WBA super world title oh, yeah, yeah. now Kanju was a regular world title yep. he was meant to get promoted to the super because Santa Cruz stepped up, dare to be great at fighting uh, Javante Davis and got knocked the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great knockout. <laughs> it was fucking, fucking great knockout, knockout, it. Yeah. Now, there's no disgrace in that. No disgrace whatsoever. You fucking, you've dared to be great. You want to be a four-weight world champion. You got knocked out by an absolute monster in, in Tank Davis. But when you come back down... You should have to fucking yeah, start the back, mate. Yeah, you yeah. have to start the... You made, you your, you, fucking, yeah, you made your bed. You should be able to go like, it. He's yeah. had a win-win. That's his safety net. Yeah. And all of a sudden, he's been able to keep it. So... Disappointing with that, but in terms of a fight, what could make like fucking have that crossover? Certainly for crossover over here to like a massive house and house of name, not just in Leeds or Yorkshire, but nationwide, would be a fight like Kanju because fucking an entertaining fight. Yeah. Was, he was, throws was, a lot of punches, yeah, doesn't he? Kanju, so, so yeah. people love to see that. Yeah. You know what I mean? The, 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 yeah, especially at the top level, if they have two fighters going L for leather, bouncing shots off his, each other's chin, you know that's that's when fucking, oh, he's, he's pretty decent. And sometimes TV networks and politics does come into it. I often think if the Frampton fight would have been on Sky Sports, then fucking hell, my profile might have been even bigger. Yeah. Do you know the, the fact what, that- What was that shown on? It was on BT. Oh, BT, yeah. BT, yeah, yeah. now the, the, the viewing figures compared to each other are different. And obviously yeah. on that night, Dillian White boxed on as well. So there were a clash in that sense. So- and you've, then you've got powers like Sky Sports News who could be constantly repeating yeah, the fight over yeah. and over again. So there's, there's things like that what come into it. But, you know, I think 
we should go over to the States and it becomes UK versus USA. They will U love you there, USA. your style, mate. Yeah, this is it. You've got UK versus USA. So, a Gary Russell Jr. was a gobshite. Yeah. You know, could you imagine press conferences with someone <laughs> like him? Do you know what I mean? He's just, oh, our lot being at a fucking <laughs> away and like just at a press conference just slagging yeah. him off. That's the kind of stuff where it's you're representing the UK then. You go over there, you do the business, you come back, you're a fucking hero. So, and plus with my style and the way that I just go about it with no nonsense, I think I'd like do all right over there. Yeah. Atom were loved over there for his way that he took his fans and the Mexicans loved him over there because mm -hmm. of his, like he used to add Barrera at one point walking to the ring with him because yeah, he loved yeah. him that much. So I think, you know, a fight like Kanju, a fight like um, Leo Santa Cruz, and maybe a fight like Gary Russell for, for you know, him being a gobshite. Yeah. They're, all, they're all there. And even even super feather, Oscar Valdez, he's a fucking dynamite. Uh, you've got Joseph Diaz Jr. Who's Would one, you look at... 100%, yeah, mate, yeah. 100%. Why not there to be fucking great? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's man, like, fucking hell. It's like I don't want to come to any of my days when I'm fucking getting pissed and why I can <laughs> <laughs> Not uh, wrong with that, mate. You know, do you know what? <laughs> maybe maybe yeah. I, could, I could have been a fucking two way yeah. I just... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't bottle it and didn't go. <laughs> so, of course, you want to fucking dare to be great. It's like all throughout my career. I look at people like, even people around me at these stages, I look at people like yourself, you know, have gone on and fucking achieved so much things. You want to replicate that. You want to be fucking more than just a world champion. I've never been satisfied, you know, and I'm still looking That's for that. That's a great trait to have. Yeah, that, I've, I've, I've never been satisfied. And I'm still looking to fill that void. And I'm, 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 I keep setting these other little goals. So it were British title, after that, it were European title, after that, it were international title after that world then fucking I've had three defences under my belt now it's be a fucking unified champion now it's be a two weight world champion so why do you not want to make a fucking legacy do you know what I mean so um, listen any one of these fights if I could have it my own way it'd be Kanju Santa Cruz Gary Russell Navaretti any one of them mate honestly like I said there's a, a lot of a lot of fucking potential out there and hopefully we do um get to see you in Vegas and we do yeah, all get to yeah, go yeah, over yeah. there because that'll be fucking unbelievable. Listen, I, I, I said to Eddie when I was signing back up, now it was a bit weird, we signed up um, early to 2020 and he'd found out what I contract. the first time you were in 2015 you signed? I was, I was with him from, well, late 2013 and 13, we, had like, right. we had like a bit of a fucking handshake contract early yeah. 14 and then I was with him until 2016. Yeah. Then, then we're at contracts more frank for three years and then fucking next minute I'm out of contract fucking other promoters are coming in for me Eddie makes me a big deal and, and I said to him listen Eddie I know that you're fucking because he's grown since I've been away from him mm. like what he's done with AJ what he's done with DAZN in the States so it's fucking massive so I said listen Eddie all I want to do I want to unify it. I want to be able to go to the States so yeah. like fucking listen I'll make that happen now for me if I could go to fucking Vegas mate listen, <laughs> I would love that I would love to just be hearing the stories for days I still hear, <laughs> I still hear stories from when I boxed in Berlin yeah. like I say oh that was unbelievable having a you took some that I, mean, I, I still hear the stories I from missed that. that all my mates went out with good yeah, excited to fight at the same listen. time and I missed it we're <laughs> good yeah. there's some fucking yeah, yeah, I think yeah. about 500 went over but some mate, there might as well have been 5,000 yeah. some of the stories every single story I've heard is like feel my mates got nicked mate, yeah. <laughs> now, now that, that's, that's, that's not, not a good thing but yeah, 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 it's a story yeah, yeah. of how they got nicked yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> which is laughable but yeah. yeah I think just to fucking have, have, a, have a Vegas and then maybe maybe a New York you know yeah, Madison Square Madison Garden, Garden you know for the culture and the history yeah. to, to be able to do things like that it's like when you go beyond you know belts and things like that it is fucking this life is about memories financial value yeah it's nice to live in a fucking big house and blah blah not having to work and stuff but it's about making the memories mate and if you're fucking can be swapping pub stories where people don't line and it's like you've had a party and fucking making their memories I mean I've had people come to my fights and they've fucking met birds and they've got families with <laughs> yeah. them now do you know what I mean it's like That's class. Josh I'm in my bird at one yeah. of your fights you're the best man at loads of weddings and all sorts I've had people like oh, I won about five grand on one of your yeah. fights Josh. fucking that paid me a little bit of debt off and it's like fucking oh, you have an influence on all these people's life I've had then on, on, a, on a serious side I've had people like who've joined up to army and got inspiration from that side so fucking hell just just for the happy sides, you know, to yeah. make fucking like the, the 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 trip to the states is what I want to do next, mate. Yeah, definitely. Right before we wrap up, there's a few trending topics I've got on here. Go on, I just want to ask you about um, some of the upcoming fights in boxing. I want to get another professional's opinion on them. First one, obviously, Fury versus AJ. I know you're a matchroom guy. But how do you see that fight going? Because there's the talk about like, it's about it looks like it's ready to get announced soon, yeah, doesn't yeah, it? Like, yeah. uh, how how do you see that one going? Who's you got? Um, Fury, yeah, I have to go Fury. Um, listen, I I He's love I love AJ. Next level, I, I love AJ because of uh, people say what he wants want about him, but as a, as an ambassador for the sport, you know, people tune into his fights, fucking not even boxing fans, and it's made he's made and then people get into boxing. He's made women get into boxing. Yeah. You know, he's a fucking speaks well. 
he's a good looking kid he fucking knocks people out so he's got that excitement about him but Fury man fucking hell he, the way that he's going and firing on all yeah, it, with the, his mental fucking, space at the minute as well yeah, he's, mate, he's, he's he, on it in he, him he, he's, he's proper on it and yeah. someone that size and six seven fucking who moves around the ring like he does yeah. he'd be told him that it's like AJ is a textbook boxer he's a textbook boxer Fury's fucking so unorthodox <laughs> and, and, he, and he can throw punches from any stands he, he can lead off with right hands it, now AJ can do that but normally does it on a counter mm. it, Fury will just be in front of you bam straight right hand bam straight left bam leading up a cut just throws random punches now and he can take a fucking shot like no he's, he's no proved but, that, yeah, he's yeah. proved that he's been able to show it, the even not even the wilder it. fight the Klitschko fight Klitschko hit Fury with some disgusting punches he just walked through yeah. him and out and it's, and it's a spoiling as well yeah. you know he's, he's a fucking he'll tire him out he's a big big yeah. man and when you try to close someone down and you're getting peppered even if they're not biggest of shots I mean he's not going to fucking hit like a pussy he's a big big guy isn't he it's the, you, like you said before accumulation when it, you're it, getting peppered and you're peppered and you're like yeah. fuck I'm not getting my own off then the crowd but start look what getting, he did to Wilder's fucking ear and face in that like, fight he just I mean, fucked yeah, him up yeah. didn't he? And it looked look, like he'd been smashed with a you brick have or to, something you have to really slow that you have to slow that down to really see what's going in there mm. and, and unless you even like the a, little short up that's what I'm saying like yeah, that, yeah. slow it down and see and zoom right in to see what he's doing in the clinches as they're fucking holding you think there's not going on but he'll be getting arm round yeah. he'll be getting arm round and some of them there might be little forearm smashes but mm. you know fucking perfectly legal is if he's trying to throw for the punch and it's just chipping away it's chipping away you know it'll toggle you up get them looking little digs in get them little body shots in and mate that's exhausting to deal with so fury for me on that one next one did you watch um, obviously you will have done uh, Campbell versus Garcia which was the sixth yes. fight yes. do you think Garcia is all he's right being built up to be and how do you see him versus Tank going Um, that's a good good question uh, I'd I think it's changed my opinion of him massively. I just thought he was just a fucking yeah. YouTube, I, yeah, I thought I was not yeah, getting you, up here. YouTube bell end. Yeah, 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 yeah. Honestly, same. <laughs> fucking good looking. Yeah, yeah. He's, a, he's a bit fast, isn't he? Yeah. But um, he, listen, he showed it, a bit of grit in that mate, fight. He proved, yeah. a, proved a bit of guile, and and he proved that he fucking was not not also with speed. He has a bit of has a bit of dig to his yeah, punches. He had a bit of a nasty side. Yeah, in him, yeah. When he, when, he, when he was throwing them left hooks, yeah. and it, also a bit of intelligence. Because, what was that about one three five? That. Uh, yeah, 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 nine nine. Yeah, yeah. So. um you know, even even that body shot there, you know, he's, he's been making Campbell fucking cover up, cover up all throughout, and he throws a little faint. Oh, it was, it was, Campbell, it was Campbell covers that. up. Yeah. He's wide open then. Mm. Just fucking faint, bam, lovely shot. You know, and that comes with, you have to be a bit of an intelligent, yeah. intelligent fighter to do stuff like that. So, it surprised me. But then again, Tank has fucking, he's you know, he's, he's a big Tank hits him like Campbell yeah, did, yeah. he won't get up, will And he? I don't think... Campbell didn't have the killer instinct in him when he put down. Yeah. Rightly so, you've you've got a dangerous. I think you were a bit shocked to be honest. Yeah, with you. maybe yeah. so. But I, if that were me, my, if that my position, I'd have been putting it on him. Yeah, fucking I'd right. have been putting it on him. You know, you've caught him cold. You've caught him early. Get fucking get him, him out of there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was still on shaky legs, but by the end of the round, he recovered. Yeah, he'd re he recovered. But he, like when he initially had him down in that minute after, he was on shaky legs. Campbell should have fucking capitalised him. Now, if that's if that's Tank, I know that Tank's got to get there, but Tank's shorter, so uh, Garcia is going to have to wait down. Where the Tank comes back, counters, if he eats him, mate, he ain't fucking letting up, mate. Yeah. He's, he's putting him to sleep. Yeah, so 100%. I'm yeah. with you on that one. Yeah. Next one, pound for pound, who have you got? Canelo, Bud Crawford up there. Who, who's your pound for pound at the minute? Yeah, it's, it's Canelo's up there, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's like fucking difficult with him being a, like he's had his doubles with drugs. Yeah, as that's well, what I mean. You know, well, like, I, I, me and Vinny, obviously you know Vinny, yeah, yeah. we say this all the time, we could not accept that he lost, uh, that he beat Golovkin because I was sure that Golovkin beat him in that yeah, first yeah. fight and I love Golovkin. I, I, like, I felt like because he's older now, he were robbed of his moment of being a proper elite level superstar in that but again coming down to the drugs thing it's always going to taint him a little bit yeah so course. I mean how long has he been doing that you know with the, with exactly the, with the, with the meat yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean <laughs> with a steroid Bud, Bud Crawford yeah. as well though, isn't he? he's another free weight world champion yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and listen I think he, he's more or less there I think but it's hard to argue with Bud you know with, like you say what he's done and the way that for instance he dismantled Kel Brook yeah. the only thing what hangs in now is the fact of how active he's been and the, and the, and the, the level of names he's fighting you know mm. yeah, his, his fighting names are all up there but he needs a Spence fight he needs a Spence fight yeah. mate to keep, to keep and, his his legacy and sometimes and keep his... it, it, it comes down to who's round you for instance in the 80s they were fucking the Fantastic Four they all built each other yeah. Agler and fucking Leonard Dur and Duran they all built each other now it's hard when you, them opponents aren't there for you but yeah. He's in a division now where there's some big, big fights, so he needs mean, to get yeah, him, doesn't he? Just, just take take advantage of it, and he will really cement himself um, as fucking number one. But yeah, 
it's hard. It's an hard one to say. It's Canelo, but can you got to think like Canelo is fucking possibly yeah. yeah. Last one before we're done. What do you think of all this YouTube business that's going on <laughs> at a minute with Jake Paul and all this yeah. shit? I know they're getting like a different audience to the into boxing, yeah, aren't they? Really? Yeah, so yeah, there's some yeah. good things from that. But when they're fucking headlining shows and yeah. people like Billy Joe Saunders are on their yeah, undercard, yeah, that's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, it is ridiculous. And so now my thing is, if they get a fucking eleven year old lad who loves his who subscribed to his YouTube channel now, this is different generation to mm. to us. I went on to my nep- uh, see my nephew of a week, and he was fucking watching YouTube channel uh, YouTube videos like you're watching fucking CITV, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cattle Network. You know yeah. what I mean? That's it. I'm like fucking, you know, what what you're watching in is watching people review things or watching people play on PlayStation. It's fucking, it's a different generation yeah. now. So these are massive to a lot of kids. If it gets them watching boxing yeah then, get, get then, some then, off the computer and get some so in the be, gym maybe yeah yeah and, and maybe they start watching the show early when if the dad's watching it and they end up watching Billy Joe Son as well you know what I might watch him again because I've seen him before but he boxed on the same show that KSI did or Logan Paul did then, then, then I'm all for that and I'm all for them fucking bringing eyes to the table but don't call them professionals yeah don't call them professionals have it as an exhibition give them a fucking different kind of license but you cannot give them a professional license calling them fucking professional yeah. fighters after a fucking six fucking, week of training it's the only sport that you can do you can't walk onto fucking Ellen Road and call yourself a professional football if you've only been playing at Sunderland League mm. do you know what I mean it's like you, there's no other sport you can't go into fucking tennis and call yourself a, prof- a professional tennis player yeah it's just it's, it's bollocks mate it's absolutely bollocks it's becoming a laughing stock um, I think there'd be a little bit more respect for him if you're right you know what we're not professionals right we're fucking we've managed to get a boxing license whether it fucking be called a c-class boxing license whatever yeah, yeah. you know you've got to have so many fights because you before you were in the stripes have been called a professional boxer and the label it on the show as an exhibition fight yeah not a fucking headliner <laughs> it's scandalous that yeah, man. i know promoters have got but having fucking press tours and shit like that like, <laughs> fuck me he's such a twat that jake paul as well and what a knob head oh, he is man, when they're, when they're fucking doing stuff now like doing his drive-bys again yeah. yeah. <laughs> fuck me man right like, you're right he's made have a clever team but like things like wbc governing bodies yeah giving fucking belts on on you know putting belts on the line for it like yeah it's scandalous fuck isn't it? me mate don't make up a belt <laughs> like that you've got People who were, who were like trying to fucking kill themselves in the ring and the gym and whatever to to get them kind of fucking status, yeah. you know, and, and somebody who's made a bit of a crossover from somewhere else. I couldn't walk into fucking MasterChef and call myself a professional, yeah. could I, you know what I mean? I'm the next I mean, Andrew Arrier. I mean, yeah. fucking banging scrambled eggs, yeah. mate, you know what I mean? I don't, you couldn't be able to do it. So yeah. like, don't come into fucking this, this spot and start calling yourself a professional. It's disrespectful. Definitely, mate. Yeah. Mate. Massive thank you for coming no on. No problem, thank um, you. I'm wishing you all the best of luck in your upcoming fight and Cheers, hopefully... Man. By the summertime, crowd's back. We'll be making that flight with you, mate, because we'll all be coming over to watch your fight. Uh, Appreciate your time. I know you're deep in camp, mate. So thank you very much. And uh, good luck in your next fight, mate. Thank you. Thanks, Liam. Thanks for uh, for all those who have been watching and uh, supporting us. Thank you. If you're not, fuck yourself. (laughs) (laughs) Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. Thank you.